This is Ground Affected. My name is your dad, and welcome to the morning after your Chinese takeaway. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to paint the ultimate of lunchbox boys, Captain Stephen Ventrial, Uriel, Urethral Ventry, Captain Uriel Ventress of this guy. So what makes this guy so special? I have no idea, but he does come in his own little box and everything, so he must be pretty special. And I'm pretty sure that most marines have to ask this guy permission before they can take a second cupcake. Now that we've got our super important background about our character we're going to be painting, I'd like to ask you to leave a like, probably leave us some kind of words in the little square box that YouTube gives you to leave words in. And while you're down there, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. And then I guess we can probably just get into painting Urethral Ventrivial. Urethral ventrits, Ethereal ventrivitus, Inventrivial. Philip. Let's just call him Philip. Captain Phil, let's go paint Captain Phil. So just to start off a little bit differently than normal, I'm actually gonna start off with the the skin tones on my space robot marine man. And this is because I don't know, it's really difficult to paint space robot men heads, so I wanted to get this out the way before I carried on with the rest of the body. Now I have absolutely no idea how to do this at all, and uh, this is how I'm going to do it. So I started off with the sort of reddish kind of base tone, and then I gave that a purple tone over the top of that, and then I gave it like a base kind of skin tone over the top, and then I sort of lightened that up with some natural flesh, and uh, yeah, basically this was very difficult because these friggin' heads are so tiny, it's virtually impossible. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know how anybody does this, but uh, this is how I did it. I used the lighter tone to kind of just push the highlights because what can you do really? It's so small that genuinely all you can do is have one shadow and then a highlight. In order to make this not look desaturated and give it a bit of more life, I sprayed a bit of grimoire purple from the bottom and made it look a bit more purplish. I then decided that was way too purple so I used Reichland flesh shade on the sides of the head and in a couple of the crevices just to give it a little bit more brownie depth. I then took black and I base coated all the other parts of the model and by a model what I actually mean is just the head of this model. So I base coat everything with black and this is because it's just going to make my life easier later on when it comes to putting the new colours over the top and I'll explain that as we get there. And can we just appreciate my volume sketch for before I started painting the armour and then I feel like maybe I should have spent more time on pronouncing that sketch but it's okay i gave it the same usual treatment that i give all my ultramarines and this is talisar blue over the top of a volumetric highlight with what i've always been calling azul blue which i've recently found out azul is actually a different language for the word blue so i've just been saying blue blue but anyway i give that a little bit of an azul blue low light from the bottom and then once that had all dried i decided that i needed to paint this coat and there was no ways i was going to be able to paint lovely wonderful folds over this piece of fabric without using my airbrush so i used liquid mask from vallejo to very carefully mask off all the bits that i had already painted I then used a white ink and I mixed this with a bit of alcohol to make it go in smoother and I sprayed this over the top of the whole cape. Coat? Ca is it a cape? I'm gonna go with cape. It's his cape, he is wearing a cape and it needs to be green so in order to make it green I'm gonna use this game ink green ink which is uh, I'm slowly starting to really like these ink kind of paints because I feel like you can use them for quite a few things to be honest I don't know if you've noticed that I gave it a bit of a shadow and once I had done all of that and allowed it to dry I came back to the model and I decided to paint all the parts that are now going to be different colors and this is with black and the best black I found for this is the Vallejo matte black because you can water it down quite a lot which means it runs into the crevasses and it just really goes nice and flat when it dries I then needed to paint all of the gold trim on this sweet ultramarine man but before I did that I made a hole in his foot and I stuck a piece of carbon fiber in and a hole in one of my base holder grab thingies for model painting and I just stuck it into there so that he wasn't going anywhere once I got that bronze color down as a base coat on all the trimming I went through again with the lighter gold and just highlighted some of the edges just to push the gold to be a little bit brighter. I used that bronze again to carefully paint the little detail trimming on the gun and then I went back to trusty old rust which is not even a rust color it's a brown color which I guess rust can be also brown but I used this color to paint this dude's uh, five 
five belts. I think he has five belts because he has to probably use them to keep his pants up after he's had a wonderful picnicking afternoon with his pals. When I was done with his belts, I started to do a bit more trimming on some of the other gold pieces, just really pushing those highlights on it and using that really bright gold. I also did the little trims on the end of his belts and I came back with a little bit of silver mixed into that gold just to really push the edges of the highlights. I then worked on edge highlighting the cape and I used white mixed into the green because I like white highlights and I don't really care so I just smashed these all over the edge of this cape. Using silver, I did the little fart vents on the back of his backpack. And then I used this contrast paint, which is called Ball Red, and I used that to paint those little tassels hanging on the back. Once I'd got most of the stuff I needed painted that I knew I couldn't get to, I glued his backpack onto his back, and I uh, continued to paint the dude with his backpack on after that. Whilst that glue was drying though, it was time to work on his head, and the way I'm going to do this is using brown, I'm just going to paint roughly in the area of his hair. I leave a little bit of a black line just around the outside, this kind of like outlines the hair. Once I've got a nice coat of brown over the top, I'm going to use a little bit of yellow mixed into the brown just to lighten it a bit, and I'm going to use stroke motions to kind of indicate hair patterns on his head, and I'm going to mo pretty much focus this around the front of his hair, and I'm just going to highlight a couple of the pieces over the front of his hair. I use silver to edge highlight a couple of the bits on the back of his head, and then I also use a little bit of brown and try somewhat of any kind of form or shape of way to make some sort of an eyebrow on this dude's head and that's where i'm calling it done no i'm not painting eyes you it's impossible or oh, it's all lies no one paints these eyes it, no it can't be done trust me yeah i've tried it, it looks dumb don't do it working on the rest of the details of this model i then painted those cool little participation awards that these ultramarines get I used red to highlight those pieces over the top of white just because white would give it a good base coat and make the red nice and punchy. I then threw my marine on the table to see if he really was as hard as they say they are. And then after he stopped crying, I started to paint the base with bronze. I dry brushed it on at first and then I just used a wash just to fill in all the cracks. And then I dry brushed with bronze again and I came back with some silver and I put that over all the little studs and I sort of edge highlighted a little bit with this color too. I then glued good old Philip onto his base and the reason I glued him on now was because I didn't want to have to keep holding him with all those parts separate and it was starting to drive me mad so I just glued him, that's how it is. I used a bit of cling film to wrap up his arm so that I could paint his sword. Now if you were ever worried about painting a non-metallic sword, it's so easy dudes. Just paint the top and the bottom of a one side nice and white and then on the opposite side just in the center of it just paint one trip there we go look at that non-metallic fancy i then skipped a whole load of stuff which i'll try to roughly explain but basically i painted a load of little lines on the sword because apparently it's some kind of magical weapon i think kind of like a wand from harry potter but i'm not really sure so i used a couple of white lines to emulate some kind of magical movement and i sprayed very lightly a blue tint just over the top of that to make it look like it was magical that's basically it really i went around and i added a bit of red trimming to the gun because i felt like i really didn't like the golden look i also then used orc flesh which was a color that i used to paint the pauldrons color that little color that goes around the outside of the pauldron i used white at first and then green over the top of that i just felt like this was the best way to make it look uh cool i guess Again, this is where I use the black in the background to kind of edge the piece that I'm painting. So by using black, then white, then green, it edged those pieces and gave me a little bit more depth. I went through and edge highlighted a load of things with white as I usually do, just to make everybody annoyed at me. And then this is the time where I took black, again, the matte black from Vallejo, and I painted his base because that's what you have to do in order to call your model done.
Hopefully this video will help you with your painting of little Space Lunchbox Robot Men in the future. And of course, if you are painting larger things, I hope that you maybe picked out something in this video that might help you with them larger things too. It's at this point that I'd like to say a super special thank you to my Patreons for their support over on the Patreon. If you don't know yet, Patreon is a place you can support creators and artists like myself who are creating and artisting things every day. I couldn't have made it this far if it weren't for their support at all. And of course, even more so for the support of the people who watch videos every time I produce a new one. Even though I don't even know some of the words that are going in them. I don't even know how they work and I'm not really sure why you're still here. Of course, this leads me on to the very important thing that if you are still here and you didn't like anything you saw here, then the only thing I can say to you, bruh, is to just pack your s**t off if you didn't like what you took it. I will calmly walk away from this camera operating device and uh, go and edit this video. Thank you for coming. Please come again soon.